Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the combined work session and regular monthly meeting for the Board of Education. Call to order, 7.04 p.m. May we have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We do not have any special recognitions tonight, to my understanding, because school has not started yet, so no students to recognize. We do have public participation. Those planning on participating in public participation, we have a microphone to the side. I'm going to ask that you speak in the mic as we do record our meetings so that people can hear you clearly who will be watching our meetings. And then Mrs. Coggin is going to read the rules of public participation. All right, thank you. Public participation is the time that the board has set, uh, set aside to encourage you as members of our community to voice your opinion on any matter, either included on or excluded from the printed agenda. A maximum time of five minutes will be allotted to a single individual or a single topic based on the number of requests. Complaints against any employee of the school system will not be heard unless the complaint has been submitted in writing to the superintendent at least seven days prior to the board meeting. If unresolved, any personal complaints about school personnel must be put in writing for the board to review an executive session. Personal attacks against any member will not be tolerated. Once the time for public excuse me, participation has passed, discussion of topics will be restricted to board members only. Thank you in advance for complying with this request. Thank you, Mrs. Coggin. So on that, since we have a lot of public participation, Mrs. Coggin and myself will serve as the timekeepers. You will be limited to the five minutes so that we can make sure that we get through everyone, please. Please keep in mind the rules that have been read aloud. Um, and so Ms. Coggin, you want to call the first person. And I'm sorry, um, and I want to highlight that on the public participation, please make sure you did print your information clearly so that we can get back in touch with you because we don't give you a response here, we do get back in touch with you, okay? All right, um, the first person is Susan Griffin. Ms. Griffin? It's right here. Are you two going to go together, you and Ms. Williams? Okay, so we'll do Susan Griffin and Denise Williams. Did you fill out okay. one? All right. Okay, five minutes. Hi. Hello. Uh, my concern is with the Liverton um, Elementary School, and um, um, the concern is the walkway, the construction over there with the roadway, the parking lot, and even a PE tracking walkway. And I have some pictures I took and I can pass it around you guys and let you see it. And it seemed as though, when I was speaking with someone, the uh, an employee over there, it seemed to be like an unforgotten school, mm. the elementary. It, it doesn't really seem like anything had been done, even with the landscaping. And if you don't mind, I can show you these pictures that I took. That's can fine. I do that? Mm -hmm. Sidewalk going out to the 
Um, my name is Denise Williams. Um, I'm real familiar with most of the people that's on the board. Um, I think the only one I haven't had any dealings with is Trey and Abigail. But um, <clears throat> my concern at Livingston, well, I'm not just going to say Livingston because I have three schools that I'm concerned about. It's Livingston, Portadale, and Rocky Plains. And um, I, I don't know if this can happen or what needs to take place. But I'm very, in, I'm very active in the community, just not at school. I'm just active in my community, period. And um, I want to see, is there any way that when a school is not performing for several years, um, that we don't continue to let that principal stay there? Um, I know that we move our teachers around wherever they need to be moved or placed to, come, to accommodate the um, kids that's coming in for the upcoming year. And so I would like to see that if a principal is at a school and that school has been, been performing for several years, well, I think it's time to say farewell and move them on and let them start building the other schools in the county to get them up to par. Because what it does, when, when you keep someone there for several years and that school is not performing, well, our kids are falling through the crack. And then they're, they're getting farther, farther behind. And so they, it's like it's, is they could never catch up. And so I don't know if anybody have ever came to the board with this issue and concern, but I would like to see that happen um, within the next you know, school year or the upcoming years because it's just not good for our kids to just keep falling through the gap. And on the west side, it seemed like the elementary schools over there have been forgotten about, but everything is, is performing on the east side. So we want the schools on the on the west to perform just like on the east because we have pulled the um, demographics and we know that on the west we pay the highest chunk of property taxes so we want we want to see something for our money and like miss susan she don't have a child in livingston but she's a taxpayer and her, her her school tax go to that district and several others that's here tonight so thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you both Um, so, Ms. Williams, Ms. Griffin, um, Mr. Michael Smith. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Right. Uh, I have basically a two part question, <clears throat> and then um, I have a question about how it applied to SPLOS funds in 2018. My question is, how are funds, how does the board make a, or what entity makes the determination about how funds are allocated between schools uh, in regards to hard assets and in regards to online resources for education? My concern is that if the pie is distributed equally amongst the schools that are performing and underperforming, then while there might be equality, there isn't equity because the schools that need to perform and need to get up to speed would need more resources both online and in person to get them up to speed. I come from a completely different part of the country, just got here. It was very interesting to see, to go to a different school. When I called, I was told my kid couldn't go to a different school, they had to go to that school. Uh, when I went to that school and it felt like you lost five pounds when you were in the, well, I'd probably use it, but five pounds in the gym because it was sweltering to the point where they decided not to have their award ceremonies in the gym. They decided to have them in the library because the library had AC. Um, it's just an unkept facility and I don't put anything on teachers because you can do what you can with the resources that you have. But when I look at the report, or the documentation, and I'm sure nobody has it in front of us, so I'll hand it up, for the SPLOS funds for 2018. Mm -hmm. When you look at the allocation of funds for the SPLOS funds for 2018 in different categories, Livingston is woefully absent. 
I had been to some of the other schools just to kind of see, drove around the facilities. I'm sure there are others that are deficient, Porterdale, a few others. But when you start seeing in 2018, you no, know, Salem and some of the other schools, my apologies, are receiving even more funds, while Livingston looks like a hostel from a third world country, and that's a slight exaggeration, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. There was a computer that was running DOS. Mm -hmm. That's 20-year-old technology. When I go into a classroom and ask my teacher how many laptops do she have, and she has 35 kids in the class, it was, I think it was 35, and there were 15 laptops, but they share. Now you have kids that are learning at different levels, sharing resources, so the one that needs to move forward can't because they have to wait for the other. That's discouraging. And my true concern is, what might the plan be for how we're going to address the concerns of schools that are underperforming with online resources to augment their learning potential. Because in pre-K through three, you learn to read. From four to 12, you read to learn. And if they're behind by third, they're doomed. Because after third, you can't read the word problem to solve the math problem. So now you have two deficiencies. I was looking forward to understanding what the, what the board might be doing to address those issues moving forward so that whatever issues were in the past or in the past, but moving forward, we might have a platform for success for some of the schools that have possibly been overlooked through other issues. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Is Mr. Smith, correct? Right. Okay. Would you write on his for me? Um, because he brought up a couple of things. The, uh, Title I funds for him. Um, and then curriculum, elementary curriculum coordinator mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. you brought up some curriculum things. And one to one. And yeah, we have an yeah. initiative for that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I've seen it. <laughs> Next is Ms. Joyce Banks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. First, I will say thanks for your listening ear. Because I'm a minister, I will also say these words. I hope that you all just don't be listeners, that you be doers after this is said. Absolutely. Um, my concern is, of course, on the west side, uh, partic this particular school, South Salem. I have, a, uh, I have two grandkids at that school. One of them is male and one of them is girl. And um, the boy, he was five at the time, five years of age. Now, some things change, but I, I do believe that this, what I'm about to say, still remains the same. All walks through life, and it starts with school. You always have a procedure that you do, kindergarten through 12. I was informed that my five-year-old grandson was suspended without taking any of those steps from day one. So, of course, I was in an outrage. I continued. I tried to follow protocol. I asked to speak with the teacher, and she said that she was going to set up a meeting with the principal. So when I didn't hear anything after I considered a reasonable time, a week or two, I tried to contact the principal, left multiple messages and never got a return mindful that the principals also know me personally so i didn't get any response from there but my question i guess concerning this matter is what do we as parents do when we have followed the protocol and still get no response concerning this for a five-year-old because if i was told by the assistant principal there that the teacher, she was pregnant with, with a child, that she was afraid of my five-year-old. I'm sending my five-year-old grandson to school to learn. If you took a professional, a profession that you are afraid of the children there, then you in the wrong business. I mean, he's five at the least. You're four feet taller than him. I mean, I, I just was so outraged at that answer that I received from them. But I just, I, that's the question I would like to know is, what do we as the parents do after we have followed the protocol of what we're supposed to do then? Where do we go to next? 
I even left several messages with the superintendent as well. Um, I was thinking about calling the news, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to pray about it and let God be God. And prayerfully, my grandson graduated. They moved him out of that classroom. And all of these problems that he was having in particular with this particular teacher just seemed so ironic that none of these happened after he was replaced out of that class. So um, that's all I have to say about that as far as Gunt would say. Thank you all for your listening ears. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next up is Carmethia White. Carmethia yeah. White, I'm sorry. Okay. Hello. Hello. This is my first meeting. <laughs> I'm Carmita White. Um, my concern, I have a student at Livingston Elementary that was retained a grade. Okay. Um, my concern was that I didn't, well, we, me and my student didn't get the proper help, I guess, that she needed to be success, successful in kindergarten. And I went to the faculty there, and I was told it was nothing they could do. So I um, did research and talked to other parents and found out that I could get testing done, and I could get it through the school system to see if it's a disability there. and the retention probably would have never happened. So now we're entering third grade. She's nine, about to be 10, entering third grade. So she has self-esteem issues. I don't know if that's taken into account when they retain a student about the growth of the student, um, the self-esteem self, um, issues. So now I'm at a crossroad because I'm not sure what I need to do because I want to get her in her proper grade, but they're telling me it's nothing that they can do at Livingston. So I don't know if it's like a program in place or something. I just need some kind of information so I can get my child where she needs to be. So that was my concern that I couldn't get any assistance from the faculty there. They told me it was nothing they could do. So that was my concern. And for any other student that's going to may go through this, that we should have resources available to us as parents to help our students. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. White, yes. I know you by first name. Yes, but I'm going to be formal and say, Ms. White, <laughs> did you put your child's name on your paper? I did, and I'll put it okay. on there. If you would give her, put your, ne put your child's name on that Okay. Paper. All right. Thank you. So that we can Thank have you. somebody contact you. Thank you. Williams? Everin. Everin? Everin. Okay, I'm sorry. It looks like Benson on here. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Everin Williams. I'm a uh, citizen of Newton County, um, a former teacher, but now a citizen of this uh, county and district. Um, my question is, and my, my, my issue that I am concerned with is the policy and procedures of ethical standards that are used in what we do here in the district of Newton County. Um, I now have a son that I choose not to want to put him in Newton County school system um, because of the leadership that we have in this district. Uh, being an educator and uh, now a citizen and reading newspaper and looking at the media, it's getting worse, it's getting worse. We can sit here and act. We can sit here and look at what we want for our children. But the question is, are we following the proper ethical standards and protocols that's regardless of, of where we are and what position that we place within our great district. 
Now, we want to maintain student success. We want to maintain teacher, we want to reduce teacher retention. We want to maintain teacher retention. We want to keep teachers here. And we want to maintain a healthy environment for everybody. And in order to do that within the district, all of our educators must feel comfortable. They must feel comfortable in their work environments. Our students must feel safe in their environments. And students and parents should feel good when they go home and not have to worry about a video airdrop or something. This is not just one particular school. This is not just one particular area. We have to look at, are we following protocols and ethics and what are teachers to do when they signify and deliver a cry for help? A cry for help from bullying. A cry for help from a school being ran from ch by children. A cry for help from anyone. Where do they go? It's amazing how we as adults sit here and focus directly on what we want to look like. But in reality, the question is, how do we prepare a nation for tomorrow if our children are not our priority? Now, I'm not trying to select any individual or individuals, but I'm talking about the way in which we handle a complaint within our district. When teachers cry out and they are ignored, when the complaints come to the board and they're given and they're ignored, And our students suffer day in and day out because the message from the educators are not being heard. As a citizen, I've experienced what I've experienced in Newton County. As an educator, I've experienced what I've experienced in Newton County. I am not angry. I don't spread hate, I spread the truth. And the truth is, we have a problem in Newton County, and that problem is privilege. We got some privileged. We got teachers that work hard out there. They get no opportunities. We have students screaming for help that's being pushed into programs that may not even be meant for them, or that could have had other opportunities, but we don't listen. And we hide from the truth. We deny the truth, and we overlook the truth. So I ask that we start looking at ethics, we start looking at how we handle situations coming from teachers and parents within this community. They're not swept up under the rug. That's all I have to say, and we need to think about that for our, our county and our district, because I'm not going in there, and I will not shut up and teach. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Do we have any other public participation? Um, no, I believe that is it. Okay. All right, since we do not have any public participation, I would like to, while the parents are in the rule room, excuse me, and I know I said we don't respond, but just like protocol, there was a young lady who asked about protocol procedure, Miss Banks, I believe it was. And so I do want to have the parents, just because we have some faces of our executive leadership team, a lot of times when you're talking to people, it's helpful to uh, put a face with a name of who you're speaking to and stuff. So since our executive leadership team is in here and some of these people will be calling you back in reference to some of the questions that you had, if we can just quickly, if it's okay with the board, just kind of step out um, of our regular agenda and have them just kind of introduce themselves. If okay. So executive leadership, because when you're going down the protocol, um, what you were saying, which is really important, we give out those protocol sheets at the beginning of the year with all those papers that y'all get to sign and stuff, but it walks you through how you file a complaint. 
And so it goes from the teacher to the assistant principal to the principal to the next is going to come over this way to the director of whether it's secondary or elementary from the um, chief academic officer to the superintendent to um, the board eventually. So, so if we could have the executive leadership team and follow y'all and even um, Mr. Garrett, you too, because they talked about some facilities. <laughs> no, <laughs> because they talked about paving and all of that. So yeah. all of you guys, Dr. Bar, if you guys would um, stand up for me and just kind of introduce yourself real quick to the group. We right. greatly appreciate it. I'll start from the blue line, but I'm Mike Barr, Chief Operations Officer. Jamie Mosley, I think I got an opportunity to meet up. my elementary people. I'm the new director of elementary education. Nikita Warfield, Director of Secondary Education. I'm Angela Robinson, I'm the Executive Financial Manager. Good evening, I'm Sheila Thomas, the Chief Strategy and Student Support Officer. I'm Bob, I am the Director of Technology and Media Services. Y'all brought up technology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tim Schmidt, I'm the Director of CTA and Workforce Innovation. Um, Dr. Smith, I'm sorry, Mr. Garrett. <laughs> Because you, you know education has so many acronyms. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Tom Garrett, Director of Facilities. Oh, I'm Adam Dulles, the School Nutrition Director. I feed you. <laughs> 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 so when one of these people get back with you guys I just want you guys to have a face to go with a name and so and, and we will get back with you uh, we appreciate you guys for bringing your concerns um, you don't have to just come to the meeting when we have a concern though we got meetings every second and third Tuesday of the month so so thank you so much. Thank you. Uh huh. You guys can stay for the meeting if you like. We would love for you to stay, but if you have somewhere to go, you can go. But we would love for you to stay. Um, we're going to go ahead and thank go you. on with our meeting now. So may I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Uh, Second. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. So we need to. I think Ms. Kaya wanted to. Yes, I was going to um, say I would like to amend the agenda. Okay. To add an additional item. So we're going to have to vote for the motion that's on the floor. If the motion dies, then you can amend the agenda. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor to um, approve the agenda as reading, as read, as is written. Excuse me. Um, all in favor? Opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion dies then. Is there a new motion? A new motion to add item um, to, I, I guess it would be Q. 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 Yeah. Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> I double checking. Um, let's see, item Q um, to uh, ex uh, the superintendent's contract. Okay. All right. So Ms. Coggin has put a motion on the floor to amend the agenda, adding the letter Q. Mm -hmm which is related to the superintendent's contract. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. All, any discussion? Having none, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, five, zero. All right, so we have item Q noted, Ms. Guthrie. All right, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved and second. Any discussion? Having none, question, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, very good. Superintendent's report. Dr. Barr. Good evening, Madam Superintendent, Madam Chair, members of the board. Good evening. Hope you're all doing evening. well. Financial report, the special purpose local option for education sales tax, East Blast 4 distribution for May was $1,191,237, which is an increase of $67,765 from the previous month. The average for the first 52 months of East Blast 4 collections is 
$520. Uh, item two, the title ad valorem tax collection for May was $73,575. And finally, the business services department uh, is working through the process of closing out the fiscal year for 2019. Um, as part of that process, um, tax um, we accrue July and August tax collections into the year, as well as July and August payroll expenses for 10 and 11 month employees. The, find it, the final ending fund balance will be available for you in October. And that concludes the financial report. Okay. Any questions on the financial report? Okay. Go ahead with B, please. Mr. Roundtree. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I um, have the privilege of presenting the strategic, um, the superintendent's report as it relates to the items that, uh, that are addressed in the strategic plan. Um, camp Jump Start was a success. The camp took place from June 10th through 13th, 2019. Approximately 145 rising 6th through 10th grade students participated in the camps held at Veterans Memorial Middle and Newton High Schools. During both camps, students were actively engaged in interactive and hands-on activities related to science, math, art, drawing, cooking, robotics, music, dance, acting, entrepreneurship, public speaking, and taking a sensible approach to learning. Also at the elementary level, um, there was a, 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 an enrichment camp entitled Camp Ignite. During the week of June 3rd through 6th, which was the week before the um, middle and high school camps, Camp Ignite personnel provided over 200 students the opportunity to explore new subjects, learn new skills, and discover new interests in a positive and engaging learning environment. Students were able to personalize their camp experience by selecting three enrichment clusters from a plethora of course offerings. Course offerings included topics such as sign language, Spanish, fashion design, entrepreneurship, cooking, photography, etiquette, musical theater, drumming, stemming, and much more. It was a truly amazing experience for NCSS students. And Ms. Banks left, but she, the, one of the, the ladies who convened before you spoke about um, having some summer activities for children um, to participate rather than them just playing sports during the summer. And so we were able to reference that. So that's what I was speaking of. So we'll do this again um, next year, too, at both levels. Um, going on to high quality workforce, staff members from the Human Resources Division attended the 2019 Gaspard Spring Personnel Conference, reimagining retention recently. The NCSS Human Resources Department was awarded the Gold Award of Excellence for Best in Class in the area of retention practices and recognition. So kudos to Ms. Sanders and her team. Culture, Climate, Communication, the Newton County School Systems Department of Public Relations, our star over there tonight, recently won five <laughs> national awards for publications from the National School Public Relations Association. The NCSS PR Department won two awards of excellence for the NCSS SPLOS brochure and the NCSS SPLOS flyer. In fact, only three awards of excellence were awarded nationally in the finance publication category, and Newton County Schools won two of those three awards. In addition to the awards of excellence, the NCSS PR department won two awards of honorable mention for excellence in writing and one award of honorable mention for special purpose publication. So congratulations to you, Ms. Davis. And finally, in organizational and operational effectiveness, this is a story that will tug at your heart. Drivers Joe and Shirley Flanagan were featured in the 2019 summer issue of the Newton County Community Magazine. As the longest serving school system employees, they have a combined 85 years. Joe, 44 years, and Shirley, 41 years, transporting students to and from school. Their commitment to and love for children and their safety make them leading examples for all school system employees to emulate. And that concludes the uh, superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Roundtree. Can we do something for Mr. and Ms. Flanagan? Can we ask them to come to a board meeting and give them a certificate or something? That's a long time. They're going to be working. <laughs> They're going to be working. <laughs> They're going to be working. <laughs> That's a long, long time. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So um, we've heard the superintendent's report. May I have a motion to approve the superintendent's report? So moved. Second. Okay, been moved and second. Any discussion on either one? A or B? Okay, having none, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, 5-0, thank you. We have no old business, new business, Dr. Warfield. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The superintendent recommends the purchase of FEV Tutor. The total, total purchase is $300,000. The Georgia background, the Georgia mathematics standards are designed to assist students with achieving a balance between skills, concepts, and problem solving. Through the standards, students are encouraged to evaluate both formal and informal mathematical arguments, make connections between mathematical topics and other disciplines, as well as reason using mathematical language to communicate ideas and information. Historically, Georgia's standardized test scores show that mathematics is an area of challenge for students. This math trend is also reflective in Newton County Schools Georgia milestone test results. In an effort to provide an additional layer of support within and beyond the walls of the traditional classroom, secondary schools will partner with FEV Tutor. FEV Tutor provides a personalized, live, one-to-one, -one, virtual tutorial experience 24 hours a day and seven days a week. The virtual tutorial experience can be delivered anytime, any place, through blended offerings, such as during the school day program, in after-school setting, or extended in the nights and the weekends. It is designed to support the individual needs and students the individual needs of students and drive measured achievement gains. FEV Tutor will work closely with schools to analyze assessment data, examine student learning styles, and explore core class resources as part of a collaborative process for developing highly targeted math tutoring plans that represent a natural extension of a student's math classroom. FEV Tutor assigns a dedicated educational program specialist, which is a former classroom teacher who serves, as, who serves as the primary contact and resource for school partners to effectively implement customized tutoring. Through ongoing data sharing and collaboration, schools will work together with their EPS, which is the education program specialist, to adapt tutorial instruction to meet varying needs of student learners. From November to June of FY19 school year, FEV Tutor was implemented to support EOC and EOG math classes. FEV collaborated with district leadership and middle and high schools to provide targeted one-on-one -on -one online tutorial support to students. Teachers and school leaders at each school site met with FEV Tutor's academic team to develop their own data-driven tutorial model designed to bridge skill gaps between personalized instruction while driving achievement gains on district, school, and state assessments. Please see the attached FY19 program report for more, de for more detailed information regarding academic proficiency as well as quantitative and qualitative feedback. Additionally, please see the attached quote and service agreement for FEV Tutor. The disbursements of funds will be based on the combination of EOG and EOC course enrollment and CCRPI results. The expense is paid with budgeted FY20 general fund dollars from Function 1000 Object 300 in the Student Achievement and Success Budget. Okay, thank you, Dr. Warfield. So we have an item on the floor. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, been moved and second. It's now open for the session since it's been moved forward. Anybody have any questions, feedback, or comments? Yeah, I, I have one. Okay, Mr. Johnson. <clears throat> Our new um, math book adoption yes. got features in it that serve some of the same items here. <clears throat> How, why, as I see it, would we have a duplication of effort here? It appears to me that $300,000 is in excess and we have spent funds in our math adoption book that will give us uh, the same access for the most part at the same time. So I, I think that's a duplication. I, I would appreciate your explanation and convince me otherwise. Okay, I didn't know if you were about to respond. I, I don't consider it to be a, a duplication of the same thing. The math book, we do have a, the, the virtual platform for the students where they can, you know, look at their books and things online, but this is a tutor. 
person. that you have you have a person that is sitting there and if a student exhibits um, a challenge with a specific standard that tutor can help them with that specific standard to address their specific need um, it's not something that's just about a particular lesson it's about a standard so if you will if you look in the um, I have a document in here I think it's the online tutoring program and it actually talks about the um, academic proficiency where the students actually are how well did they actually master those specific standards so it's personalized for the student it's not just about their um, what they're learning during that time it is it, it's just a personalized experience for the students thank you I've got thank you. a question this is can be utilized not it's after school I mean it's this is 24, 24 hours, hours seven, seven days, days a, a week I wanted to make clear and it's a it's just like having your teacher <clears throat> at your fingertips so all day when any my day child goes home from school and is struggling with his algebra homework he can log on there mm -hmm. meet with his tutor and she'll walk him through the steps so that yes ma'am because i know nothing about algebra yeah. yes <laughs> ma'am and we utilized it last year and i you know i can't speak about everything because our scores are embargoed at this time but we did when we had the opportunity to triangulate data we saw incremental gains in our math um, scores there was some there was one grade level where it was a substantial gain in our math scores. <coughs> and when you look at that and you compare that to even where the iowa assessment said there there would be expected to perform at the end of the year and then that we're implementing a program like this adding that layer of support you see at the end of the year they surpassed where the beginning of the year said that they would actually be so it's been a great support um, you also can see feedback from teachers because we have some qualitative feedback in here teachers administrators as well as students um, they had positive feedback and students just enjoyed having someone that they could call um, I think I expressed that the last time we were trying to look for something that was similar to homework helpline when we were younger and this is something that addresses that need and if you Go guys ahead. can recall when um, the, the people from FED Tutor did the They're presentation here. for us, they did provide student okay, feedback to us. That was the one where the, one of the students said, I just recall that comment, that mm -hmm. she didn't like her tutor mm -hmm. and can she have another one. Right. And they were able to give her another tutor and stuff like that. So, And then Mr. Richard from Clements um, spoke about it right. as well, just to kind of jog your memory on it. One other comment. I'm sorry. Well, I, I remember... Um, we were so enamored with mm -hmm. what you guys were doing. Uh, we talked about if we could get more hours to, mm -hmm. to service more students. Mm -hmm. Is this the same um, quote, or did we get more? This hours? is more hours, and so um, we the the schools are they. <laughs> They, were, they want more sure. hours, they, they just want, and so this will provide them the support year round versus we piloted, I think, from, well, I know, from November to January, and then when we saw that the pilot was working for the two schools that we had, mm -hmm. then we asked, you know, we came to the board and we said, is it possible for us to offer this um, resource to all of our mm -hmm. students that are in our EOG and EOC um, courses? Mm -hmm. And right. so this is just more hours. Awesome, mm -hmm. good. Yes, sir. When, uh, when I first read the introduction to this, it did spell out that it was $300,000. I can't open it up now, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But further reading it on the weekend, it had a discount in here. That discount is gone. So. Uh, is it, it's gone on. I can't get to it. I don't know. It should be, it should still be on the contract. Are you still locked in? On the online to proposal, you know that coupon we clipped out of the paper. <laughs> it expired. You can speak to how you all offered us there. Yeah, that's all. It's talking, talking about, about the um, mm -hmm. hours. I think you all had. It was yeah, somewhere yeah. where it said that there were. There was grant. Hours. There were grant hours of nine hundred. There were grant yeah. hours so, that they yeah. provided. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, so we uh, we discounted all of our implementation costs, mm -hmm. and we also granted nine hundred additional hours, which comes out to be about twenty two thousand five hundred dollars. And so we, um, you know, I would love to give you more, um, but the company just won't let, let me do that. At if this you got time. something we can pilot, we'll take it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think what I'm looking at, I, 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 you can correct me. What is the bottom line cost? Is it 300000 or, or 263 or whatever it is? It's $300,000, and then it, he added additional hours, so that... That um, at was, no cost. At no cost. Yeah, at no cost. From it, at no cost. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 
So I was just letting you know how much it was, how much it actually was yeah. equated to. Right. The the way that it, just the way that it was ca okay. captured here, but it it looks like it looks like we've allocated three hundred thousand dollars, but it's only costing us two hundred and eleven or something like mm -hmm. that. So, but he has actually, a copy of it if you'd like to see it. Well, I'm, I'm you. telling you what I read into this system. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It looks a little. So Mr. Johnson no, is saying we okay. only owe them two hundred. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what was on the, on the thing. Yeah. <laughs> And the superintendent saw it, so I'm yeah. saying I'm not up mm here -hmm. preaching. I'm just telling you. What I, I believe. You. Yeah. Well, what is it? It's three hundred thousand dollars yes. total. I yes. thought you just didn't want to put three hundred thousand. <laughs> this is great for secondary. So yeah. Good. All right. Any more discussion before I call for the vote? Okay. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Five zero. Thank you, Dr. Warfield. Thank you, Mr. Roundtree. You have item B. Good evening, again. The superintendent recommends the following parent representatives as a board of directors for the Newton College and Career Academy be approved: Alcove High School, Ted Cummings; Eastside High School, Mike McQuarrie; Newton High School, Wendy Lowe. Background, the Newton College and Career Academy Charter School received approval by the Georgia Board of Education on March 11, 2010. The charter outlined um, various requirements um, of the governing body, and you have that in the body of the item. The charter also outlines the following classification of board members. The superintendent and Newton County Board of Education will nominate a member um, will nominate a member of NCCA's Board of Directors. Nominations will be approved by the CEO and a majority vote of the directors. The President and Board of Directors of Georgia Piedmont Technical College will nominate a member of the college's Board of Directors to NCCA's Board of Directors. Nominations will be approved by the CEO, the superintendent, and a majority vote of the directors. The CEO and high school principals will nominate one parent from each high school to the Board of Directors. Parents will be eligible to serve as long as they have children enrolled at NCCA. Nominations will be approved by majority vote of the directors. The CEO will nominate two at-large business representatives to the Board of Directors. Nominations will be approved by the superintendent and a majority vote of the directors. So the names that I um, read to you earlier are being recommended for approval. The Board of Directors will assume responsibility at NCCA on August 1st, 2019. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roundtree. Is there a motion to move it forward? So moved. Been moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have a, a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. We have discussion. Yeah, just a quick question. I'd love to get a copy of the entire list of all the folks you just directors. mentioned, other than just the parents, okay. uh, if we could get that. Okay, I'm saying say that again. Mr. I'd like Mayor. the entire board. Yes. Just okay. it, like you named a bunch of people. Okay. We're only voting on three that are the current exactly. board. Of okay, I, I will get that from Mr. Walker. Okay, okay. sure. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Any no, other course. discussion of feedback? Yes. What's the length of term that they serve? Um, uh, according to the item, they will serve as long as um, they have a child enrolled at the Career Academy. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <coughs> okay. I'll call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Five zero. Thank you, Mr. Roundtree. Well, it's one here. Dr. Smith? It's a one year term. As long as Good evening. Good evening. The superintendent recommends the 2020 Newton County Carl D. Perkins Career and Technical Education Program Improvement <coughs> Local Plan be approved. There's some background in accordance with the Perkins CTAE Act, each eligible local school system shall submit an annual local plan and application for career and technical education. According to the law, federal funds are now tied to the date that the local plan is approved by the local Board of Education. Board approval will allow these funds to begin being used for the 1920 school year. So in the attachment, I think you'll see the budget overview section that the total federal Perkins grant awarded in Newton County for 2019-20 is $211,571. Our submitted plan is very similar from year to year, so we provide a summary of changes to this year's plan over those you've approved in the past. There were not many changes to be made. Uh, you'll see there that some information and figures were updated throughout, primarily reflecting the new data from FY19. Uh, I'd like to highlight the 20% increase in pathway completers from FY18 to FY19. Um, it's probably even more exciting if you remember that our FY18 numbers were about 20% higher than they were in FY17. So we're seeing 20% gains two years in a row. 
our counselors, administrators, and CTA teachers really have done a tremendous job involving the students and keeping them in pathways, and they really need to be publicly thanked for that work to get those numbers where they are. You also have a chart showing the performance indicators that are tied to Perkins grant funding and how we compare as a district to the state's performance. And just remember those are numbers from 2017-18 school year, so the data lags a little. You'll see we outperform the state average on five of the eight indicators and are especially proud of our 96.3% CTA concentrated graduation rate. And you will also see the 1S2 academic attainment in mathematics indicator uh, was not met indicated on the chart. And so we've been taking a deep look at that uh, particular item as those numbers weren't what we expected or want them to be. Uh, after researching the data, I talked to the State Department of Education, CTAE staff, and they did some digging and called me back finally this morning and we've discovered that the data reported there isn't accurate. So they are trying to figure out what happened. They're talking to their IT folks, they're talking to their data collection people, and they'll tell me that they'll provide me an update as soon as we can. So I don't know what that number will be, um, but we'll, we'll get accurate information from them as, as soon as we have it. Uh, of course, that doesn't mean that our work uh, to continue to improve is on a hold. We'll certainly keep going to improve and, and do better in all the areas, including math. Um, and, and again, I'll share the results of the DOE's data adjustment when we have it. And so with that being said, the plan you're being asked to approve tonight uh, will continue our efforts to provide quality career technical and agricultural education experiences for our students by providing access to the federal funds allocated to Newton County. So that is item C for you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Smith. May I have a motion to move it forward, please? So moved. Se second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Okay, I do have, it's not related to this, but Dr. Smith, while I have you up here, because I don't know if I ever spoke on the um, thing that you had, and I don't want to give it the wrong name, uh, where the teachers engage in going out to community. Mm -hmm. Externships. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if I could, I just want to commend you on that. Mr. Johnson and myself came through. You're speaking um, too quick. You, 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 you handled the uh, process. <laughs> well, I, I'll let him say what he wants to say, but I want to commend you on that. Um, I would recommend more teachers get involved with doing that. Um, and just for our community folks is where <clears throat> teachers got a chance to go to some of the manufacturers, some of the plants in the community and actually see what people do so that they're better, help, uh, better able to help students understand different positions and prepare them for positions in the future and also kind of um, cater their classwork to um, some of those fields that we don't think about, like at General Motors, uh, not General Motors, General, um, Mills. General Mills and the uh, Rock Quarry Place. And so it was it was really good, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. I <laughs> won't speak for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Smith. I, I want to congratulate him as well. I am very fond of the program. I was impressed. I enjoyed it all. And for the teachers to take the time out and to go get on excavators and bulldozers and go into cooperation within this county to become familiar with that personnel organization. You talk to some of the presidents, the chief operating officer, they talk to them all to get a gist of what we need to do for our students. And believe me, it's tough to duplicate what they demonstrated uh, the week last week in, in school, I believe it was. And that also connect from my perspective the portrait of a graduate new, in the new system. That is the heart of that little piece of paper, mm -hmm. not a little piece of paper, but mm -hmm. what it's on. Mm -hmm. And I certainly hope that you will continue and whatever this board can do, and I'll speak for the board tonight, since you already said <laughs> 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 that we need to do what you ask us to do to promote that program. You're here. I, I just, I just uh, can't say enough about it. Thank and, you. And, and, and the enthusiasm of the corporation that they visit, how the, the, the company employees were active. They were excited as you don't know what right. in sharing that information with us and with the students. Mm. It's a win, win, win situation. Again, thank you, mm. and I look forward to hearing from you. I'm looking for your request list. Okay. <laughs> I will request it. Thank you. <laughs> but I will say, 
Um, I'm a very small part in making that successful, and so we've got great industry partners. We've got a great economic development office at the county level, and so really I appreciate and I'll share with all the people that really make it happen, but I, I don't do a whole lot with it other than get people excited and then let them go crazy, and our teachers <laughs> take it from there, So, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll call for the vote for item C. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, five zero. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Thank you. Ms. Ramsey, you have D. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. The superintendent recommends the approval of the attached agreement between Newton County School System and the following provider to provide speech services, occupational therapy, physical, physical therapy, vision services, and deaf hard of hearing services to students with disabilities in accordance to their IEPs for the 2019-20 school year. The district is responsible for obtaining, providing, or arranging for the provision of special education services as determined by the student's IEP. Newton County provides these services through contractual arrangements with outside agencies when the need for services for students with disabilities cannot be met through school system employees. Hourly rates for contracted services are based on years of experience and level of degree obtained. NCSS is currently contracting with agencies to provide services for speech language therapy and other related services as required by students' IEPs. The contractual agreement for EBS, which is Educational Based Services, is attached. Funding source will be FY20 General and Special Education IDEA funds. And that concludes item D. Okay, thank you. May I have a motion to move item D forward, please? So Turner. moved. Okay. Second. I do. Okay, thank you. Um, Turner move. <coughs> um, Coggin second. The floor is open for discussion on D. Okay. Having none, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Five zero. Thank you. Thank you. E and F, Dr. Jordan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The superintendent recommends the approval of the purchase of Iowa assessments for use in elementary and middle schools. The assessments will be administered during the month of August 2019. The purchase amount is 211500 the board has been granting the purchase of Iowa assessments for use in grades 1 through 8 for the purposes of measuring student performance relative to criterion and norm reference standards. This purchase will allow the district to measure student growth as required by Senate Bill 364 and provide college and career readiness benchmarks. Iowa assessments serve as the universal screener and are also used for placement test purposes and gifted identification. These assessments will also provide the district with valid and reliable data to measure instructional effectiveness. This is associated with strategic goal area number one, student achievement and success. The funding source is FY2020 General Fund Function 2100 Object 610. Okay, thank you Dr. Jordan. For E, um, may I have a motion to move it forward? It's the same thing. Second. Okay. Any discussion on E? Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask it twice. I'm going to see who pick it up. <laughs> when I read this initially, it showed $300,000 at the front of the request. But if you look at the purchase order amount, it is $63,000. I mean, sorry, two eleven. It's to, you are correct. It is two hundred and eleven thousand five hundred. We mixed up. In I'm not sure where the three hundred thousand oh, okay. came from. It it it, it is a mix up. Arms. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We we Mr. Johnson and I mixed up your document with Dr. Warfield's document, okay. which is why we were having a hard time understanding how the where the discount went <laughs> because it was showing up on this document and we, and when I when I pulled it up Don't and looked say at the it. Discount. <laughs> so when we saw this, when I saw this document, I knew exactly that both he and I took this document and placed it in the wrong category. So okay. that's what happened. Mm. Riverside is giving us a discount, by the way, though, of 63500 Yes. So. Yes, they are. Thank uh, you for the grant hours. Yes, and they're giving us 900 right. grant hours. That's right. <laughs> okay. So it's 211, Mr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. We got it. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I told you to do it twice. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we'll go ahead and vote on item E, and then Dr. Jordan will let you do F. All in favor for E? Aye. 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 Any opposed? OK. 
Okay, five zero, go ahead with it. The superintendent recommends the purchase of an upgrade of EduClimber and Achievement Dashboard, a component of the Comprehensive Student Data Solution from Illuminate Education of Irvine, California. The total cost is $93,500. Illuminate Education's Comprehensive Student Achievement Data and Assessment Solution provides a turnkey platform to handle the school system's student achievement data and assessment needs. One component, EduClimber and Achievement Dashboard, which provides school and district data dashboards, was piloted and used to monitor academic, behavior, attendance, and intervention data. Due to its success, it was deemed advantageous to utilize this software throughout the school system. This is associated with strategic goal area number one, student achievement and success, and the funding source is FY2020 General Fund Function 1000 Object 612. Okay, thank you, Dr. Jordan. May I have a motion to move F4? So moved. Second. Okay, then moved by Mr. Johnson, second by Mrs. Coggin. Any discussion? I, I do have a question. Um, we have lots of apps and things, and this sounds like one that we already have. So is this replacing something that we already have? Uh, yes, <laughs> it's, it's going to, um, the great thing with this, well, there's many great things and I get excited about this because I'm a data geek and so I, if I get too excited, just stop me. Okay, but then others are laughing because they know me. Um, the great uh, thing about this, well, again, there's so many great things. This is going to allow teachers a one-stop shop. It's bringing multiple systems together in an automated way so that teachers will no longer have to go to multiple systems. Mm -hmm. Everything is pulled together and it's painting a perfect picture of a child and all of their data. Every piece of data that we have on that child is in one place and therefore we are preventing students from falling through the cracks. Mm -hmm. We will have our eyes on all data. Another component of this will allow us to eliminate a dual process that we currently have in place with behavior data. Mm -hmm. They will enter one time into one system. It automatically feeds over, generates all charts that are needed, and eliminates those hours of dual entry into another system. That's yes, great. sir. I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I get so excited about this kind of stuff. Well, we're in the learning curve of the process that this is going to take place. The monitoring and the supervision of this collective data. I'm, I'm viewing this as a person that's maybe in the third grade, and in some point in time during that development, we're going to turn this steam on and we're going to look at everything. Or will this be a day-to-day -day function? And I ask that, and I ask this, and that's another question. Do you have the resources to effectively manage this process? Yes, sir, we do have in place, with the team of people sitting in this room, we do have the resources to implement this. Introduce your team. <laughs> the executive leadership team. <laughs> they are, there are components of this that touch every strategic goal area that we've identified. And each person, each director, each chief that is over that area will have the opportunity to work with that and implement those various pieces. We have training that is part of this cost, and we will roll this out in a very methodical and strategic way. Okay, I've mm -hmm. got one question. Mm -hmm. But the teachers will have access to this mm -hmm. every day. I mean, they can go in there and say, yes. I've got a student that just out of the blue is having trouble mm -hmm. with this. Let me go back and see. So this will be accessible to them. And the company is, is great at working with me. And if I say I want to turn this on so that teachers can use it, they allow me to do that, even though we don't pay for that. And I did that this last <coughs> year. And 
they didn't say anything. You know, I said, hey, can I do this? We really want to see what the teachers think about it. And the teachers that I've allowed to have access to it already, they look at it and they say, oh, my goodness, are you serious? It's all in one place. And it, the interface is so easy to use. And when others see it, they want it. But yet I can't turn it on for everyone because we haven't purchased it. When will the rollout take place? I mean, I'm just imagining this from a teacher's perspective with their mm -hmm. new school year starting mm -hmm. and having their new list of kids. This would be a great tool for them to have to see what, you know, Joe Smith, um, his data that comes with him, what type of student he is. So, If you approve it, then I will be able to set up training and we will look at those training dates and try to do that as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. How long? Oh, go ahead, Mr. Turner. <laughs> now, will it pick up the students from this point or will it go back and pick them up previous forward? Historical data is already there. I've already been transmitting that and playing around with it. So the data flow is already there. And this past year has allowed me to do that for every school in the district, every student in the district, even though we only piloted three schools. Great. How long will the training take place? And then how, at what point do you um, expect for people to be using it if efficiently, like really know what they're doing? As with any implementation, um, when it comes to software, you want to give yourself so that you're at 100% operational across the board. I've learned in my years, you want to give yourself three years. I'm aggressive. I would like for a year and a half down the road for us to be fully operational. However, I know that with any type of software, we need to proceed very methodically and make sure that people have the opportunity to explore and things are implemented the way they should be. Okay. So then you're saying a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So for a year from now, even though that's not a year and a half, so mm -hmm. next year, this time frame, mm -hmm. you'll be able to come back and present to us like how it's working out yes. so far. Yes. Okay. I will be glad to, yes. Okay. All right. Great. Any other questions or feedback? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Five zero. Thank you, Dr. Thank Jordan. You. Dr. Fial, you have G and H. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Hello. The su superintendent recommends the annual renewable contracts and purchases with the following vendors be renewed for an additional contract term. In structure, this is a Canvas learning management system for a total cost of $77,680. Um, Byteworks, it's a maintenance agreement for Cisco infrastructure for a total cost of $172,397.01. I was trying to get them to get rid of that one penny, but they wouldn't. Um, FileWave, a technology asset ma uh, management software with total cost of $63,872.25. And BridgeTech Solutions for our network email security software for a total of $72,902.61. Um, Canvas Learning Management Software is enterprise software that delivers document tracks, reports, and manages instructional content, enhances, and supports classroom for teaching and learning. After reviewing alternatives on the market, the LMS Canvas was developed by infrastructure by Instructure was identified as the best option. And I believe we're in year four of uh, using the platform. Uh, the next item is uh, ByteWorks. This is our maintenance program uh, for Cisco infrastructure and equipment. As a technology network in the school system and facilities continue to expand and evolve, it becomes critical to have maintenance and support systems in place to keep them operating at optional uh, efficiency. The technology department showed in Cisco SmartNet as a multifaceted technical support service to meet this need. SmartNet provides school system personnel with technical assistance, online support, and detailed diagnostics to solve problems with the core switches, rack switches, and phone infrastructure. The service also provides ongoing operating systems updates, rapid hardware replacement, and on-site repair and replacement when needed. Um, and the school system will use the state contract uh, listed uh, in the documents. Uh, FileWave is software that we will utilize to manage and secure asset tracking, configuration of iOS, Android, Mac, Windows clients, 
Its layered institutional model and configuration provides a seamless integration for app and profile deployment, resetting passwords, data procure protection, a remote wipe and inventory reporting, and more. The system will utilize a contract managed by the National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, a national person cooperative to purchase the software. And uh, last one on this one is Bridge Tech Solutions, network and email security. Barracuda is the leading provider of cloud-enabled security and data protection solutions. The solutions purchase, including Sentinel, a cloud-based software for Office 365, utilizes an AI-based protection to stop spear phishing and other, um, that's through the email, not the spear phishing. <laughs> um, I know you've had a long day, so I'm trying to keep it a little. Long. <laughs> and uh, other email attacks from reaching our user inboxes. Email security gateway manages and filters all inbound and outbound email traffic to protect from email borne threats and data leaks. Allows organizations to encrypt messages and leverage the cloud to spool email if mail servers become unavailable. The spam firewall protects email servers from spam viruses, spoofing, and spyware attacks. And the messaging, messaging archiver archives and retrieves data while reducing the email storage requirements. Barracuda software and solutions will be procured through the reseller Bridge Tech, and the school system will utilize a contract managed by the U.S. Educational Technology Purchasing Alliance, a national purchasing cooperative. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fido. <laughs> Um, go ahead and do H. We'll do G and H together. All right. The superintendent recommends the laptop carts needed for the school system be purchased from Virtucom, uh, Peachtree Corners, Georgia, with a total cost of $75,840. As part of the regular evaluation process, technology departments review the options on the marketplace to store and charge the school system's growing fleet of mobile devices. Lock and charge jo Joey 30s were determined to be the most advantageous option. The Joey 30s carts charge, secure, and store and transport multiple types of devices, including Chromebooks, tablets, laptops, and iPads. The top Top-loaded design includes baskets that allow device deployment in a much faster time frame. The school system will utilize competitively bid contract by the National Buy Board, a national person cooperative established by the National School Board Association to purchase the carts. The carts includes delivery, assembly, and cleanup. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Fio. Mm -hmm. May I have a motion for G and H? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Just can you read all of it one more time? <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning. In Just only G. Just G. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? Okay, five zero for both. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item I, Mr. Lindsay. Can I ask a question before you come up, please? Uh, Mr. Walfield. Going back to her presentation. You gotta wait till other matters of interest. Go That's ahead. Okay. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. Madam Superintendent, Madam Chair, the superintendent recommends the milk and ice cream needed for the school system to be purchased from Mayfield Dairy Farms LLC of Athens, Tennessee. The estimated contract values are $500,000 and $35,000 respectfully. And then I would like to say just for its rationale, uh, keep in mind that milk does the body good. Mm -hmm. And uh, GEC contract is more competitive than the state contract and it's a requirement for us to offer a choice of milk. It'll be taken out of the school nutrition funds, and we're always trying to consistently and constantly targeting the um, operational and organizational effectiveness, so. Okay, may I have a motion for I? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? I'm sorry, uh -huh. any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Okay, five zero, thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Thank you. J through M. Mr. Garrett. Good evening, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Good evening. Item J for you tonight. The superintendent recommends the annual renewable contract for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning services order to ACS of Covington, Georgia be renewed for an additional contract term. <clears throat> the effective date will be July 26, 2019, and the expiration date will be tw July 25th, 2020. The estimated contract value is four hundred twenty thousand okay. dollars. Go ahead and read K L and M for me. We'll do them all together. All right. <clears throat> Item K. The superintendent recommends the contract for electrical services be awarded to Osborne Electrical Contractors of Covington, Georgia. 
the effective date would be July 25th, 2019. The expiration date, July 24th, 2020. The estimated contract value is $125,000. An invitation for bids for contract electrical services open July 9th, 2019. Uh, numerous vendors were contacted. Only two vendors participated in the solicitation and one completed the solicitation process. You can see the, the bid there in the table. Upon evaluation, it was determined to be in the best interest of the school system to award the contract to Osborne Electrical Contractors as they provided the lowest overall cost. Okay, Ale. The superintendent recommends the approval of the use of the fields at Newton High School by the East Metro Steelers Incorporated for Youth Football. East Metro Steelers has requested to use the field at Newton High School for youth football. The field will be utilized for five games and practices between August 25th and December 8th, 2019. The facility fee will be $800. Select employees will be hired at the facility during use. The principal of Newton High School has consented to the arrangement. Okay. And M. Item M. The superintendent recommends the identified items be declared surplus and disposed of per board policy D O. Thank you. May I have a motion for JKLNM? Second. Move and second. Is there any discussion or comments for either one of those items? If so, just highlight which letter you have a question about. I just have a comment on uh, J. Earlier we had a parent to talk about uh, a school that didn't have air conditioning. I'm not asking you, do you know where it is? But if you know, would you dispatch somebody out there and get it done before school starts? Absolutely. Okay, appreciate it. Okay. I have a question about K. So only two vendors um, uh, sent information for electrical services. Are electrical services hard? Like, is it hard to get vendors for that? The market is very strong. Hmm. That's what I would say. Okay. I left the business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just wondering about that. That's, whoa. Okay. All right, call for the question for JKL and M. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Five zero for each one. Thank you. Thank you. Item N, Ms. Sanders. Did you, did you skip that? Mm -mm. Good evening. Good evening. And Item N. The superintendent requests that she be authorized to employ or transfer staff during the first month of school as enrollment and class size equity within the district demands. The district is committed to maintaining K through 12 class sizes and you have a chart that's provided. Um, in addition to using the chart above, accommodations for growth have been made to a limited extent, but if class sizes exceed the maximum levels, teachers may need to be added. If more teachers are employed than needed at one school, then classes are collapsed and teachers are transferred. Paraprofessionals may also need to be added or transferred. The superintendent has historically been granted the authority to employ or transfer staff as needed in order to effect the change prior to the August board meetings. These additions or transfers will be included in the August and September personnel recommendations for ratification. The FY 2020 budget contains funds to offset any additions to personnel and this item relates to strategic goal area two, high quality workforce. All right, thank you, Ms. Sanders. Is there a motion for item N? So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? It's a comment or question. Uh, what will it have do to the budget if we take the chart that's displayed here, the number of students one, two, three, if we decrease that to 24, mm -hmm. uh, 23, what will be the impact and, and going on down the line? What will that I know you probably don't have numbers. Right, right. Um, but I would like to see what the impact on our budget would be. Uh, Mr. Rattry is. is I don't have a chart with you, but you're talking about reducing yeah. the class size from the limits. Some of those group. instances, I, and I don't have a chart before me, but in some of those instances, we may not be funding class size, right. which means that we would not get the full funding that the state would send for that particular. So we, 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 we put these numbers here, but the, the classes are not really at those sizes. 
most classes uh, particular are, we look at all the schools by grade level and then we look at how many kids are in each class and let's just say um, a school has uh, 22 students in it and then um, everybody else has 29 well then we we work to balance that out so that no school has more students than any other school um, to, in total so these are just numbers that we go up to but for the most part we are well beneath those numbers well I, I it's telegraphed in the wrong interpretation to me mm -hmm. if we're going to use this as a guide well uh, I, I think we should strive for the best numbers mm -hmm. we and do. budget accordingly but this is not reflecting that. That's what you're telling me, right? Right. We, we so. actually do that. Um, what that is telling you is that um, that's, the, that's the maximum that we would go up to. But, but we look at all of the numbers during the allocation period, and we're not at those numbers. So we, we're, we're, we're lower than that is what I'm saying. So, but that's the maximum that we would ever go to. Well, why don't we show the real deal, so to speak? We can get you some information. We have the we have spreadsheets we can get you so you can see them. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Five zero. Thank you, Ms. Sanders. Mrs. Fury, you have O. Indeed. Um, I recommend that. Um, you approve your board governance um, annual report. For some reason, it's not pulling up for me. Um, pardon me, but it's, it's now stuck on surplus. Um, you want to look online? Here it is. Um, it, it finally opened up. Um, your local board governance annual report, which is required by the Georgia Department of Education, as you well know. Um, yearly training requirements are set forth by the Georgia Department of Education for local school board members and superintendents. Approved training sessions by board approved trainers are offered during the school year on a variety of topics and also at the Georgia School Boards Association Winter Conference and the Georgia School Boards Summer Conference. Required fees may be associated with the trainings. However, a record of completed training has to be recorded with the Georgia Department of Education at the end of the school year. And as, as customary and, and standard, all of our board members have met the credit hours earned um, that are required to be earned, which is nine hours, um, have maintained the code of ethics and maintained a, um, uh, the, a conflict of interest standard. Um, as you do every single year, um, which we should be very proud of that. All of our board members um, often, not only do they meet the standard, but often they exceed the standard. So um, we appreciate the hard work of our board and, and this document is recorded with the Georgia Department of Education. But you must approve it before I can do that. Okay. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, 5-0. Ms. Sanders, P. Item P, the superintendent recommends approval of personnel items as outlined in executive session. Okay, item P, is there a motion? Second. 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 Discussion. Discussion. I want to uh, abstain for the vote on this because of MISS specialists? Okay. MTSS. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Okay. Four. Zero. One. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Sanders. Question for Ms. Wolfe. We got one more item. One more item. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's not on there. It's amended. Huh? We amended it. Oh. Yes. So item Q is going to be brought forth by myself, the chair. So item Q was to amend um, the agenda at well, uh, to amend the agenda relative to the superintendent's contract, um, requesting an extension on the contract. So the contract will now end June 30th, 2022. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 
five zero. Thank you. Other matters of interest, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, Dr. Walfield, can I ask you another question? Yes, sir. On the presentation there on you had training classes, three of them going by memory now, mm -hmm. and it was $1,700 per class Six. on your A. Item what is A? A. A. Item A. Is item A. He said it's training. Said item A, training. Let's see. Down at I'm not sure. Down. Were you um, the FEB tutor that mm -hmm. you presented on? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, that's is it on the supporting documents? I don't know where I... No, I think yes, that's going it. back to uh, the testing. The, that Dr. Was Jordan's. The, uh, Dr. Jordan's. Oh, Jordan. it's Dr. Yeah. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. Oh, okay. I know yeah. you're happy. Thank you. <laughs> they gave me a little exercise. <laughs> I needed it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other matters of interest? Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Jordan, I think, has left for the night. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know where she is. What's the question? Yeah, right here. It's this... <laughs> There's a quantity of three basic training, up to six hours on site training to be delivered in one day, $1,700 for each of them. So 5100 would be the total as well. And, and see, and I asked how that would be handled, and she said it would be handled up here, but she did, but there are going to be people trained on that. So I was, uh, there's a yeah, misunderstanding. You, so you were just asking who would be trained right. to mm -hmm. run this, to implement the system. And because I would assume that would be people that work directly with Dr. Dr. Jordan would be one, um, and then her office. Well, and the different people throughout the system would be trained principals, mm -hmm. then then it would cascade out into the into the schools. But this, we're, was this for Iowa or for the Edu Club? It's for the Edu Club. Edu Club. Okay. It's the third thing on there. Yeah. Mr. Rountree, I don't know if you have yeah, it. So typically when, when we purchase um, items like that, they will provide the professional learning to teach us how to do it. So she will probably do, as Ms. Curry has already said, will be the host. And then, again, as Ms. Curry has already said, then you know others will be trained um, to help deliver the training. But your question is about the cost? Both. You're training three. Mm -hmm. Who will that be? Because she said it would be handled here. And I said okay. introduce. Well, remember in the... Um, 2000, um, in the 2020 budget, you all approved a new position in her office, um, which is a data specialist. So that person will be the um, other person that will be trained. Um, and then, so typically, we also will probably be um, Kim Wilbur because she handles RTI and, and those extra And those like MTSS that. specialists. And the N MTSS specialists. So she will probably be the third person, but that we haven't decided that yet. We try to get the funding first. And then we try to work through the particulars after that. But I know it'll be Dr. Jordan and um, and then the new personnel in our office. Thank you. Okay. Any other matters of interest? Oh, yes. <laughs> Unless somebody else wants to go first. Oh, okay. Um, so, in uh, for other matters of interest, we um, we are getting back. Up and running. Um, all of our teachers will report tomorrow. Um, that is their, the 24th is the first day of school for our teaching staff and um, the first day of school for students will be August the 1st. We do have open houses coming up. Um, let, Friday begins the high school open houses and the College and Career Academy is from 430 to 630 and the other traditional high schools are from 5 to 7. On the 26th, on July the 29th, we have open house for middle schools from 5 to 7. And on July the 30th, we have elementary school open house from 5 to 7 um, p.m. We also have some back to school supply giveaways that will be going on um, on the 27th of July. The first one will be at Newton High School um, from 12 to 5. And then earlier in the day on the 27th at Springfield Baptist Church, we will be represented um, from 9 to 12, where they will uh, be doing multiple things with respect to back to school giveaways. Um, and those are the ones that I know of, but there are other back to school giveaways that take place all throughout the community. So parents and um, grandparents and family members to pay attention to that so that people um, you're able to attend and know where 
um, those events are taking place. But we're excited. Um, we are ready. We've got a great group of um, new teachers who have joined our staff, uh, and we've got some fantastic veteran teachers who will be um, fired up and ready to receive our students on the first day of school. Okay, thank you. Any other matters of interest? All right, I just want to say a uh, great job on the new teacher orientation. I stepped in for a few minutes and stuff like that. I've met a couple new teachers who are excited. Um, and then I stopped into Dr. Fayal's Teach for Tomorrow conference today. So good job. It was some good information, actually, that I sat in to Ms. Wilbur, um, where she was talking about the MTSS and running through some things regarding RTI. And um, the parent worksheet that's up there, I don't know whose idea that was. They had the terminology and questions for parents to be able to ask who has a child in RTI so they'll know when they're coming to meetings what how they can advocate. Great idea. I really appreciated that. And that's something I just wanted to bring forth to the board because we always talk about, you know, wanting our parents to have more information and more access. So I don't know whose idea it was, but that was wonderful. So that's the only thing I have. May I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, we didn't do a second. Well, However, me and Mr. And Johnson. All y'all move. move, so um, <laughs> Mr. Baker, Mr. Johnson. We, we all, all in favor. <laughs> meeting adjourned 8:34 p.m.